I want to thank you for uh, your work uh, in the past on behalf of our students and our school system here in making Prince George's County um, what it is. Uh, those of you who may have run across in some capacity any of my children, I apologize. In <laughs> my wife and I, or should I say her mother, has, has done, done her best to raise them right. Um, I will say this though, um, and, it, and it goes to show what we have here in Prince George's County. Uh, with all joking aside, all three of our children came through our public school system. And as many people know, if they've heard me talk before, um, my wife is a public school advocate. Uh, one of the reasons we moved from the District of Columbia to Prince George's County was she insisted that we send our children to public schools and I, the thought of my child going to the school that was right next to us scared me at the time. Um, she said, you have two choices. You can send you there and make it better or we can move and you can send them to the public schools in Prince George's County. And we moved. When it came time for us to make another choice about our middle child who was falling behind, um, I went to my wife and I said, you know what, honey, I think on this child we should probably look at other options. Maybe, um, maybe this is one we need to pull out. Maybe this is one that we need to send to private school and maybe get the extra attention. And she said something that has always stuck with me and I do say it a lot, so I apologize if you've heard it before. And um, she said, well, why do you think we should pull her out? I said, well, honey, you know, from kindergarten, she started kindergarten here, and first grade and second grade, she is now reading at a kindergarten level in third grade. Our kindergarten is reading at a third grade level. And I said, we're having problems with her and, um, you know, and, and paying attention. And she thought about it and she said, you know what, sweetie, <laughs> so you know what's coming next when she says, sweetie. <laughs> she said, there are seven kids who I recognize were in kindergarten with our child, and first grade with our child, and second grade with our child, and now third grade with our child. And I wonder if they're having the same problems. And I said, I don't know. She said, because since you're an elected official, and I assume that they will do special things for you if we ask them to do those things. And I said, yes, I hope so. She said, good. We're going to leave her in the public schools, and you will ask for them. You will ask for those special things for the other kids who we don't know, but who are in the same grades with our child, to make sure that no child in here is falling behind. Because isn't that what you ran on? Isn't that what you ran on? It was not to provide a better opportunity for your child. It was to provide a better opportunity for all children. That is the role that you have played in this school system, and that is the role that you play today. And so when I come to you today and we answer questions about what it is that we've done uh, to reshape and try to reshape Prince George's school system, it is with that in mind that there are options for many of us on where we send our children and how we educate our children. But there are also many of us who have no option. And just like it was a urgent for me to make sure my middle child got the best education, I didn't want to hear that school was going to be better two days from now, four years from now. I wanted it better yesterday for her. The same way I feel about my children is the same way I feel about every child and every person who works in our school system and works in Prince George's County. So that gets us to where we are today. I know many of you have heard, and I know when I came to this building uh, during the time that we introduced legislation, and I will once again tell you one quick story, and I'll try to make it quick, about my wife. As you can see, most of my education is from my wife. She teaches me every day. Um, so she had to raise four people, my three children and me. <laughs> but as many of you know, or maybe you've heard, and I've said this, is that, um, you know, my wife is not doing the best right now. There are challenges. 
just like there are challenges for everyone. And when we have those nights when she's not really doing well, uh, we get up and we drive around this great county of ours um, just to kind of calm ourselves down. And in the middle of session one night, we were debating what was happening in our school system. We were in the middle of the session and it was almost over, 30 days left, and my staff was so happy because I hadn't done anything crazy in, in almost uh, 60 days. But as I was driving around with my wife, we went to some of the, you know, the things that spark her memories, which is usually places where our kids went to school. Um, it happened to be this particular night, we took a long drive to Suitland High School where they graduated from. And I started to think, We were about to select a new superintendent. I'd been in office for two and a half years. My kids were gone from the school system, so the sense of urgency of them every day pestering me was not there. But as I drove with my wife and we went past Suitland High School, I thought about what she said to me many years ago about our middle child, and I thought about where we are as a county. One of the wealthiest counties in the wealthiest state, in the wealthiest nation on the face of the earth. One of the most educated populations in one of the most educated countries in the world. And yet we could not retain a superintendent for any length of time. Our pay of teachers was dismal compared to our surrounding jurisdictions. The state of our education was making progress but slow and I thought about what she has said to me many years ago and I said to myself you know what we got two I got two options I can wait when it's safe after June of next year because I was looking pretty good in the polls from what they told me so you wait to June until you're reelected and then you do something about educating somebody else's child that's feeling as urgent as you are or I could do something right now which will make a lot of people mad. It may cause me to find a new career. <laughs> Certainly will make my staff mad. And I decided as we drove back to our house at three in the morning that I would type a memo to my staff and said meet me in Annapolis, we're putting in legislation because we're gonna at least attempt in this administration to do what it is I said I would do. If I am wrong, they will send me home in June, and that's fine. If I'm right, it would may give us a chance to better our school system in a way that benefits all of our children, the way that I think, and it's a guess. As I showed up that morning, we introduced legislation. They said, how do you know it's gonna be better if you do this? I said, I don't, but I know it's not better now. I could be wrong and they'll send me home and that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. It should not be waiting until you're comfortable. We put the legislation in and 30 days we passed it, which really made a lot of people mad, including those who occupied this building. But as I said to them and I'll say to you, if it did nothing else, it raised the level of education debate in the county to a way it hadn't been in a while. It was on everyone's mind, right or wrong. It was on everyone's mind and right or wrong, everyone's career was on the line. Because one of the things I've learned in my long political career and as my hair thins out and gets grayer, is if I'm going down, I wanna take a whole bunch of people with me. <laughs> so as I put my career on the line, making the appointment of the superintendent and the leadership of the school board, I thought, heck, why shouldn't the council join me? It's easy when you can pass a budget. Think about it. We give the school system $1.7 billion. After we give the school system $1.7 billion, the council and I can actually stand up and say, we have done all we can about education. We've improved it. We've made a difference. In reality, we haven't. We don't know if that money is going to the right place. 
We don't know if even if that's the amount of money we need to move our school system forward. But we can honestly say that we've done what they asked us to do and run for re-election and get re-elected on an education platform, not knowing whether somebody's child was educated any better or not. So, since I'm putting my career on the line, I thought they should have a part in this. So they get to select one board member. Because why? Because many times when they send the budget over there, they say, you know what, we send it over there, they don't listen to us, we have no role outside of this. Well, now you have a role. You get to select one member on the school board and you're, you're tied into this. So while we're at it, why don't we make the legislature responsible also? Because in the past, the legislature, and I was one of them, would say, you know what? We got more money for construction coming back here. We got our money from the state. I've done all I can to make sure education in Prince George's County is better. But yet, I don't know whether, in fact, as a legislator, any child was educated by what we did. But you know what? As a legislator, as a delegate or a senator, I can honestly say I did everything I can. Well, now they can't just say it. Because they are the ones who gave me the authority to appoint the superintendent, to appoint the leadership of the school board, and to appoint three members. If I am wrong, if they don't hold me accountable, it is their fault. So guess what? For the first time in the history of Prince George's County, education is everybody's responsibility. Everybody's responsibility. There is not a single person elected who is not responsible. So if we don't improve, if we don't do the things we are, it's not just for Sharon Baker, it is every last one of them. And that is the way it should be. It's not Maxwell's, it's not the school boards, it's not the teachers, it's not the parents, it's all of us. All of us have to be responsible, and that is the only way you make improvement. That is the lesson that my wife was trying to teach me many years ago. It is everybody's responsibility to educate every child next to their child, and every child that lives in your neighborhood and everyone in here to make sure the quality of life. So when people ask me why I put it in the last 30 days, I simply say, blame my wife. <laughs> But I close with this. We need your help. We are here to help you in any way that we can. We need your knowledge, but we need your help. We don't have the answers, but we're certainly willing to listen and try. And I will tell you this, if you help us, that we will do everything in our power to take that information and make sure that Prince George's County is the best school system, the best school system whole. That is from everyone who touches our school system. From the maintenance worker or to the most important people in the building to me, and that's the cafeteria workers. Because <laughs> they were the most important people to my middle child, because that's where she went and got her snacks to the people who teach them, to the people who do administration, to the people who greet them as they walk in the door. Everyone. Thank you.